Hobie? Hello? We have a little bit of a situation we wanted to run by you. Mobius! Wow! Great to see you again! That, that's what's been happening. Wow! Time slipping. Wait, time, you know that? Yeah. You've seen that? Yeah. Can you fix that? No. It's impossible to time slip in the TVA. I know, but we just saw it happen. Yeah. Loki finds himself in the Time Variance Authority's past where he is treated like an intruder and also where Kang's presence is everywhere as a ruler supreme. Hey everyone, welcome back to Clubhouse Movies Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Robocabo, joined once again by Abel Panetta, and today we'll be reviewing Loki Season 2 Episode 1, Ouroboros. And as you may know, we are contractually obligated to review every single episode of Loki since the day one. It's how we started, how we got into this mess. Is yeah. <laughs> That's how we got into this multiverse of madness. I'll tell you what. You know, we lost people on the way here, but we're here. I, I do think this is the best Disney experience we've had uh, with uh, Marvel in a while. Uh, I've been a lot of disappointed. Yeah, with lately. with Marvel for sure, dude. I like. I was. Wa- I saw this episode two times already. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched it and then I watched it again, literally back to back. It uh. it felt like it was better than any movie coming out from Marvel. <laughs> yeah. I think this show is so zany, uh, and for some reason, having uh, Tom Hindleston's Loki and Owen Wilson's uh, Morbius is a really good, like, kind of buddy cop, like retro uh, show. And uh, yeah, and I there was you know I, I'm just gonna go full spoilers. I don't care. Uh, but there's a scene where uh, Owen Wilson has to go out into temporal space. I don't know what to call it in a yeah in a diving like you know deep sea diving spacesuit yeah like sphere yeah this, this this really creepy thing and he has to go and fire a harpoon at the timeline to harpoon loki yeah. back into a- his time as he is deteriorating as he's literally deteriorating and he's uh he's gonna lose all his skin if he if he if he yeah. if own wilson if he fails yeah so, there's Loki will there's be lost drastic, time. like he loses all his skin and what what's happened to, to Loki what's his thing again uh, he will be stuck in the the timeline phasing in and out oh, of right, different yeah. timelines um, and I swear there was a scene because Loki's going back and forth from the past to the present right yeah and Got the morphing wool, time going on yeah the wool has been uh, put over the eyes of everyone in the, in the TVA or, or un, they've un what is the word they, they, they are no longer blindfolded to the, the, the falsities oh, yeah. of the TVA. They have taken the red pill. Yes. they. Everyone, though, everyone has been red pilled. They found the, 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 the yeah. head of the statue. So every, yeah. yeah, so that's everyone has been red pill in the current time, in the, in the jump that happens with Loki. Whenever he's jumping, he's getting hints of what has happened. So people don't realize that, you know, he's been there already. It, it's, and it sounds confusing, but when you're watching the actual episode, it is done so well it's a like it's a it's, simple it's a simple episode it's a simple and uh and it works yeah. to its it's uh it's credit because you're able to follow it and also we meet uh, a new character obi aka uruburos who's kind of like the uh the tech guy in the basement and yeah uh, played by uh kehun kwan yeah uh you know, short from, round from indiana jones and uh he recently yeah. won an oscar for everything everywhere all at once uh, anyway stupid movie anyway, anyway. what Thanks, world, for gracing us with that other multi madness esque movie. Yeah. Um, but I definitely felt some timey wimey Doctor Who moments there, where uh, Loki. See, was, I've never watched it, but I could see how that could be a thing. Yeah, where where Loki was able to, when he was in the past, talk to Ouroboros and communicate with Owen Wilson in the present, which may be hundreds of years later. Uh, where yeah. New, new memories so would appear. Uh, so that was actually pretty, pretty cool. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I liked it. And like I said, not a lot. I, I did too. It was an action scene pretty much, uh, the whole thing. So not a whole lot of story progression. Uh, yeah. And I looked up uh, a quick synopsis of the episode. So mm-hmm. just to quote this, uh, this Esquire quote here that I just pulled up randomly. Yeah. It says, Loki is suffering from some sort of Marvel mumbo jumbo ailment. He's uncontrollably bouncing between timelines in fits and bursts and throughout the episode sprints around the time variance authority, aka TWA, uh, looking for Mobius 
who suddenly doesn't recognize him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and also in this past, like, like I said, uh, Kang the Conqueror statues are everywhere. Right. And then he's able, yeah. he's able in the present to change the, uh, the timekeepers, which is like a trio of timekeepers. He's able to prune like the wall and send it back and, and show King he's in charge. And there's actually a pretty yeah. good, uh, there's also a pretty good back and forth with Owen Wilson and, uh, and Loki where he's like, yeah, he, he, did he give him his name? It's like, he just called himself. He who remains he's like, Oh man, that's badass. It's like the last, yeah, the no. Last and, then, one standing. and then I know it wasn't a, a nod to fifth element, but it was so cool that Loki was like jumping out of, like out of the building and lands into yeah. a floating taxi. Yeah, yeah definitely not to yeah, fifth yeah. element. Also a bit of a star Wars episode one or episode two where they're, where they're yes. chasing the people around. And then also uh star Trek, uh, the next generation, the last episode, this happened to Picard where he was jumping between really? time zones. Yeah. Uh, different times. And he didn't know why. Oh, so uh, good. So good. And then, like I said, doctor who new memories. How are there new memories? Like he, are you in the past? So great to him. Because that happened a few times. Isn't that weird? Yeah, because uh, so there weird. was an episode in particular I'm thinking of Doctor Who where there was a Christmas carol, but with time travel. So he was actually able to yeah. go back in time and show him things. Anyway, that's how that works. Uh, but, you know, that's just our quick quick take on Loki Season 2, Episode 1, Ura Bros. I'm going to give it a B. Yes. A solid return to the world of Loki, time, travel, and interdimensional mayhem. I was seriously at the edge of my seat when Loki and Morbius had to do their bizarre sci-fi plan to save the day. Nice. Well, I'm going to give this one an A minus just because one, I had to watch it back to back because I felt like I needed to pick up every little nook and cranny that was dropped off by this episode. And I want to make sure I pay attention to whatever's happening here because I feel like it's going to carry on into the next episode because it is for sure there's going to be no crazy separate episodes. I feel like they're just going to be continuously telling one story through this pr episode progression. So for me, it just brought me in so quickly when I watched it. And, you know, everybody fears the sophomore year of an episode of a show or, you know, any kind of music album or something like that. It feels like it's going to have the sophomore blues. This one picked right up. And I want to say it picked up faster than season one did. So I'm all in. Yeah. Cannot wait. I agree with you on that one 100% because I, I tried to go back and actually watch season one to prelude this and I couldn't get as engaged with it as I wanted to. I think just at the beginning, um, somehow I'm actually getting kind of turned off by seeing the, the actual like mainstay, like Avengers world. Let's say you remember the Yeah, show same the, here. I'm actually like, you know, I see Captain America and Iron Man and like all these guys. I'm just sort of like, nah, you know, I've been there. So Loki isn't, yeah. isn't a superhero show anymore. It is. And, and he, well, here's the thing. A time that, traveling so this formula, at least, yeah. So it's turning to this cool, awesome sci-fi epic. But even more so is this is a recipe I think Disney needs to follow. Is like I, I don't know if you got to watch it, but I got to watch all of Ahsoka recently, and I'm gonna say that they need to pay attention more to the minutia of their own universes that they have at their disposal, and actually flesh them out. Because, dude, let me tell you, Ahsoka took off and i'm so sad it already ended and i just have a feeling that loki is going to do the same thing to us because they're pulling in from this vast network of characters and they're just fine-tuning them you know it i just i think they need to do more of this i missed it but did thrawn play his weird tubular uh drum bone machine did he, no, did he, do he did not. No, he didn't come out with the... But I'll, I'll tell you right now, you got to watch it. It is... It's good. Like, it's good. Uh, yeah, well, we'll check it out. And also, is worth uh, mentioning the Loki uh, post credit sequence where Sylvie, which is a female version of Loki, goes to an 80s McDonald's and uh, yeah. and orders everything on the menu, which I went back and I did see some of the YouTubers comment on this show, and they were saying that yeah. technically Sylvie has been on the run her entire life since being a little girl. Uh, so this is the first yeah. time that she's ever been able to indulge in 80s per perfection McDonald's. Well, I, to, to give a real world nod to this cool 80s thing, because I've been nostalgic as heck for whatever seems like, feels like the last few months, um, I was driving somewhere this weekend to pick up a camera and I drove by what was unmistakably the awning for a classic blockbuster here in Georgia. <laughs> like the I'm not kidding. The awning was right there. The building was right there. It was something else now, but it was like whoever bought it knew what they were doing and were just like, you know what? We're going to keep the same color scheme, same awning. 
we're just gonna they even had the same rectangle like just right there and then they rebranded the middle part it was awesome yeah pretty good there's a a really good south park episode about uh blockbuster being haunted like it was like after everything i think it was called yeah. the episode was called the nightmare on facetime and randy <laughs> yeah they, they sold they sold the last pretty blockbuster good. to randy um oh, for no. pennies on the dollar and then uh yeah. he, he would go and then he would help a, a ghost in leg warmers and then he's the randy's like hey uh, can I help you find something? And then, like, the ghost is like, Can you help me find Turner and Pooch? And he's like, Turner and Pooch. And then, Turner and Pooch. <laughs> Turner and Pooch. And then she disappears. Whoa! <laughs> and Randy's like, oh, oh, I get it. <laughs> Blockbuster is so old, it's haunted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just a, a thought. But anyway, uh, that's been our hot take on Loki episode uh, one season of season two, Ouroboros. We will try and actually. Uh, review every single episode of Loki. So remember to like, share, subscribe, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you can. We are around. I'm your host, Mark Rulokawa, joined once again by Mr. Ail Panetta for Clubhouse Movies Podcast. We'll catch you next time. Woo! Woo!